copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 95. Attention all San Joaquin County Sheriff's cars. Be on the lookout for Willis Patterson and William McKenzie, who escaped last night from the Stockton Jail. That is all. Ladies and gentlemen, Calling All Cars is pleased to present as guest artist Miss Sue Carroll, lovely young motion picture star, who will be heard in tonight's broadcast as the part of Mrs. Patterson. Boys, how would you like to be a detective? And girls, would you like to be a policewoman and do detective work? Rio Grande offers you free a complete detective outfit. Listen at the end of this program for complete details. School has just started. Thousands of boys and girls must use the streets in coming and going to school. Unless motorists are especially careful, many shall be crippled or killed in auto accidents. Rio Grande has issued strict orders to all its gasoline trucks and all Rio Grande oil company cars to watch out for school children and observe even greater caution near all schools. Won't you, too, drive more carefully? When you hear the shriek of a police siren, when police cars come tearing down the street, let the sound of the siren remind you that Rio Grande Crack is used by more police cars than any other brand. When you hear fire engines racing past, bells clanging, sirens screeching, motors wide open, remember that Rio Grande Crack gasoline has been chosen to power more fire engines than any other brand. In the score of leading western cities and counties, the purchasing departments have made careful scientific comparisons of all gasoline sold in this market. They have chosen Rio Grande Crack as the official gasoline for their most important cars, their emergency cars, because tests prove that the exclusive Rio Grande cracking process creates a more powerful, faster gasoline, a gasoline that averages 10 points higher in anti-knock rating, a gasoline that burns far more efficiently and far more economically than uncracked gasoline. Isn't it significant, Mr. Motorist? that these big city purchasing agents with all their scientific buying choose the same Rio Grande cracked gasoline that you can get from your independent neighborhood service station. Why don't you profit by the experience of these experts and enjoy police car performance in your car? And now it is our pleasure to present Deputy Sheriff Judy L. Weber of Sheriff Harvey M. Odell's staff of San Joaquin County, who will speak to you from the studios of KFRC in San Francisco, California. Deputy Sheriff Weber. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The case we are bringing you tonight from the files of the San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office could point a strong moral. Two robberies and a murder would not have occurred if our force had not been undermanned by a curtailed budget. There are many complex problems to the financing of a community, and the will of the citizen and taxpayer is always in the end the dictating factor on how public money should be spent. But in any community, two public functions which should never be limited in the receipt of public money to enable them to function properly are the schools and the agencies that enforce the law. Crime decreases in communities where education is sufficiently disseminated. Crime increases in communities where the public budget will not permit adequate police protection. Such a fact made possible the jailbreak about which you will shortly hear and, in the final analysis, cost the life of an innocent citizen. It is my sincere hope that the taxpayer considers these things the next time he or she is asked to vote upon tax expenditures. Our story opens in the cell block of the San Joaquin County Jail where in two adjoining cells, a check bouncer and a hijacker have struck up a firm friendship. Well, another five months and I'll be out of this, Pogie. Eh, I wish I could say as much. What the devil did you plead guilty for? 
The only reason I did was that the rap was so small that I didn't see no sense in fighting it in court. Yeah, but I had to plead guilty. That guy, Solari, I hijacked, recognized me. He identified me on the stand, and then where'd I be? Yeah, but hijacking ain't so hot. They'll probably put you away in Quentin for a couple of years. Yeah, not if I can help it. I've applied for probation. You've applied for probation with your record? Well, it don't hurt none to ask. That chance you'll have of getting it. Well, maybe I will and maybe I won't. But there's one thing Pipe sure. down. Here comes the guard. The vendor? Yeah? Dana wants to see him. Well, what for? I ain't done nothing. Don't ask me. I don't know anyone. Maybe it's going to spin you, Max. That chance. <laughs> After going over the list of the prisoners, Mackenzie, we've come to the conclusion that you are best qualified for the job. Thank you, sir. You'll keep the books as well as assist me in my duty. Yes, sir. You'll realize that in this position as trustee, you will have privileges denied the other prisoners. We expect that you can be placed on your honor and will not violate the trust we place in you. Oh, yes, sir. You can count on me. <laughs> the key to the city? Darn near. He made me a trustee. What? Sure. I'm moving out of this cell down to the trustee tank, and I'm handling the books at the desk. Hey, that's just fine. What do you mean? You and I are going to be pals, ain't you? Sure. Okay, then. I'm not going to wait for probation or anything else. They're walking out of this joint. What do you mean? Why, with you at the desk for a cent. Yeah, but I'm a trustee. Don't be a sap. You know how far you can trust that cop, don't you? Well, that's just as far as the ought to trust a jailbird. And I reckon Pal is every man for himself, except in the smart guys like you and me that team up. And we're the guys that get places. Yeah, but... Pipe down and listen to me. I'll be wondering why you ain't come back in a minute. Now, the next time my wife comes to see me, I'll knock you down to win for a wife what we're going to do. And Max, this is a sin. A lead pipe sin. <laughs> Pat, darling, how are you? I'm okay, babe. Hello, Trudy. Hello. Oh, I wish they wouldn't have this wire between us. I want to kiss you, Pat. I want to put my arms around Yeah, you. but this is a pogey, not a parlor. Now, listen, honey. Cut out the slop and get this, because you ain't got much time. I got a new pal. He's over there at the desk. They made him a trusty. Next business day, you bring me a set of saws, give them to him. You're going to break out? Sure. Well, be careful, please, honey. Sure, you know me. I want you to meet this guy. Hey, Mac. Yeah? Come over here a minute, will you? Sure. Mac, I want you to know my missus. Pleased to meet you. Yeah, glad to know you. And who's your cute friend, Pat? Oh, yeah, this is Bab's sister, Trudy. Hello, Trudy. Hello. Not bad, Pat. You've been holding out on me. Yeah, well, I can't think of everything. Now, listen. Next time the missus comes down, she'll bring the saws and drop them on your desk. Get it? Okay. I'm go, Patterson. Well, I gotta go now, kid. Goodbye, honey. Goodbye, Bab. And be sure them saws cut steel. Good afternoon, ma'am. Did you wish to see someone? Yes, please. I've come to see my husband. And the name? Patterson. Oh, yes, Patterson. Just a moment, please. Visitors for Patterson, Mr. Springer. Very well, I'll bring you down. Well, that's you put on, Mrs. Patterson. Please. Got the toes? Here they are. Inside this newspaper. Well, I'll just slip them into the desk drawer here. When are you making the break? Day after tomorrow, I go on night shift. We'll be waltzing out of here any time after that. Well, that's... Well... Guess you'll be glad to get your sweet daddy back, huh, Mrs. Patterson? I'll say. How about you, Trudy? I was about seeing something of you when I get out, huh? Okay. I think you and me will get along swell. Maybe. Here comes Pat. Come along, Trudy. Okay. See you soon, Trudy. Mackenzie, how do you like this night shift? Oh, it ain't so bad. Quieter than daytime. Yeah, but I like it better on day shift. Why? Well, it's a big responsibility guarding a jail full of prisoners. Down, he ought to spend more money on his law enforcement agencies. Ought to have a couple of men on duty here all the time. 
Too much for one man to handle. Too big a responsibility. Now take that, for instance. There goes the buzzer from the alley door. Probably got a drunk to book. I gotta go all the way down and let him in. While I'm gone, anything could happen up here. Oh, no. Not with me on duty. I'll watch you after thing. Well. 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 I'll watch you after thing. Well, see as you do. I'll be back in a few minutes. Yes, sir. Now, let's see. The keys ought to be in this door here. Yes. Here they are.
getting hungry. Yeah, don't you suppose I am? It was no fun laying in those bushes for two days and not even a cigarette to smoke. Well, our troubles are about over. We're visiting here for a while. Whose house is it? Blackie Taroni is an old pal of mine. Gee, it's swell to have friends, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, here's the joint. Now, let me do the talking. Okay. Now, you better be home. Here comes somebody. Oh, hello, Blackie. Oh, hello, Scott. Meet my friend, Bill McKenzie. This is Blackie Taroni. Hiya. Scott, the new one, McKenzie. We're coming in. Uh, wait a minute, Scott. He's got to be on the spot. All the coppers in the world are looking for you guys. Yeah, what of it? We're coming in. Yeah, but the Pat, you know how it is. Listen, sure now. I do. You're always ready to help an old pal. Yeah, but if the bulls find you here... Never ain't. Because we ain't going to be here very long. Just long enough for you to wrestle us up some grub and give us some clean clothes and drive us out to that ranch on the Lockford Road where Eddie Waters is foreman. Now, look here, Pat. That's asking the point. I ain't asking you anything. I'm telling you what you got to do. But look, look at it this way. Now, now I... Sheriff Odell didn't know anything about that hijacking last winter. And they found two guys lying in the irrigation ditch with their faces blasted off now, would you, Blackie? No, but Pat, that's all over. I'm going to strike, you know. I ain't in the racket no more. Once you're in, you're in for life. You're going to do as I tell you, or I'll take care of you one way or the other. If the bulls don't get you, spray a lead will. I'll get your old lady to work out in that kitchen and stop your beefing. Mac and me's in a hurry. The safest place for you boys to hide is out in the barn here. Well, it's not exactly the risk, is it? No, but that hay will make a more comfortable bed than a cotton jail. You shut it. Yeah, it still makes the guy feel good to have a pal like you, Eddie. No arguing like we had to do with that rat Blackie. Well, what'd you expect? Hey, small-time stuff. Yeah, and going straight up. Big... Hey, Eddie, how about your boss? Will he get wise? Nah, he don't come out here from town very often. And I got a good kid working around the joint to look after you. Can he be trusted? I'll say. And he's smart, too, and ambitious. Willing to make a dollar any way you say. Oh, that sounds right to me. What's his name? Harry Blackwood. <laughs> Good morning, Harry. Oh, hello, boys. I brought you in some breakfast. That's well. And can we punish it? Say, uh, Harry, Mac and me have been thinking. We're getting tired of laying around this barn. We want to get into action again, and we need some help. You want to play ball with us? For oh, sure. That's fine. What do you want me to do? Well, first of all, we need a fast car, and I know where we can get one. Where's that? Mike Bonomi, a bootlegger who lives over on the river, has a big sedan, just what we need. You drive us over to his place tonight, and we'll hijack his car. <laughs> Do the work all right, Harry. We made 85 coming back from Mike's last night. Sure is a swell heap. You got those new plates to patch up, Max? <laughs> Boy, that Japanese farmer's going to wonder what it's all about when he finds a license missing from his old Ford. How about the rods? Did he get them for us? Yeah, three of them. How are you with a gap, Harry? Well, to tell the truth, I, I never handled one before. You didn't? <laughs> You're going to be a lot of help. But don't worry about me. I got plenty of nerve. Well, uh, okay, kid. I like you, so I'll take a chance on you. Who are we going to knock over first? There's an old guy by the name of Fitzgibbons who runs a service station and bar out of the junction of the Comanche and Wallace Road. He's always got a big roll on hand and catches a lot of checks for his friends. We'll take him tonight. Get him, Harry. 
Yes, I think so. Let's see. Click on that light. I'll say you got him. Right through the heart. I thought you said you never fired a gun before. Oh, I did. That is the first shot I ever fired. Yeah, don't let it get you down. Come on, let's go over this bed. The road's probably around here somewhere. Oh, gee, Pat, let's get out of here. I can't stand to look at it. up. Let's see. Yeah, here's the poke under the pillow. Okay, let's get moving. You got that phone off the wall. Okay. All right, you. Outside. Uh, don't shoot me. Please don't shoot me. They want it to be good. Go on, outside. Now, you stand right here by the gas pump until we're out of sight. Don't make a break for it because two of us will have our gas on you. Okay, boys, pile in. Save your breath. 
Go to State in San Joaquin County, California. All right, shake him down, boys. Say, hey, now look here. Enough none in Pat- uh, Patterson, Gavin. Okay, put him in the car, Murray. Yes, sir. Come on, you. Why, you loud. He's making a break. Hey, let him have it. Let him have it. Oh. All right, take McKenzie in and book him with the fugitive, Murray. I'll call an ambulance and take care of Patterson, if he's still alive. How is he, Doc? Three bullets in the back. One of them is fine. If he lives, he'll be paralyzed for life from the waist down. Can I talk to him? Yes, but don't try him out. He needs his strength. All right. I'll be careful. This way. Well, Patterson, how are you feeling? Oh, uh, sorry we have to wing you. And I, I don't blame you, Don Cap. You did your duty. I took a chance and I lost. You want to come clean about that murder in Calaveras County? I don't know nothing about it. You admit you're a fugitive from justice. Yeah. I admit that. I'm an escape, but that's all I admit. You're pretty sick, Patterson. An honest confession's good for the soul, you know. I'll get better. I'll get out of here, go see. You'll never walk if you do. You can't scare me. I admit I'm a fugitive, but I didn't do no murder. What's more, I don't know nothing about it. Mackenzie is not so difficult. Faced for the case Sheriff O'Dell and his men have built against him, he confesses and names Blackwood as the actual murderer. Back to Stockton goes Mackenzie, paying for his 18 days of freedom with charges of murder, robbery, and grand theft lodged against him. Now the search centers upon the missing Blackwood. As a link towards his capture, officers concentrate upon Eddie Waters. Eddie? We had you in not so long ago for murder. You beat the rap that time. But if you're going in for this sort of business, you won't stay out of jail very long. You can't try me for that bum beef again. We know the law as well as you do, Eddie. We know we can't try you for murder again, but we certainly can make your life miserable by watching you day and night. Ah. We don't think you're such a good risk anymore, Eddie. Now, how about it? Where's Blackwood? I don't know. I have an idea you do, Eddie. I think your life would be a lot happier if you told us. Oh, I ain't no fink. I'm not asking you to be. I'm just suggesting that you be sensible. Well, last I heard he was back in town staying at the home of Mrs. Johnson. Staying with Mrs. Johnson? Yeah. That's the wife of the man you were accused of murdering, isn't it? Yeah. Well, well. How summer. You boys sure keep everything in the family, don't you? Eddie's information was correct. That night, Blackwood was found at Mrs. Johnston's house, and with all three men in custody, with an iron-bound case against them, the legal machinery began to operate. But death beat the law when Patterson, weakened by his wounds, succumbed in Boise on August 20th. Blackwood, because of his youth and the fact that he had no prior criminal record, received life imprisonment in San Quentin. And Mackenzie, 38 days after he had broken his trust in the San Joaquin County Jail, was entering the grim gates of Folsom for the rest of his natural life. Death and prison, such were the rewards of these three buckaroos who thought they could make crime pay. Rio Grande offers free of charge to every boy and every girl a complete junior police detective outfit. Police badges, guns, holsters, fingerprint outfits, siren whistles, and many more gifts to come. All free. Every motorist who buys five gallons of Rio Grande cracked gasoline is entitled to one unit of police money. Save these units. Every boy and every girl wants them because they can be exchanged for complete junior police detective outfits. When you drive into the Rio Grande service station, ask the attendant for your free copy of the latest Calling All Cars news. The big special double-sized edition. Besides the regular two detective stories and latest movie news, it describes the many free gifts that comprise the junior detective outfit and tells how to get them quickly. You'll get a lot of extras at no extra cost when you get Rio Grande Clark gasoline. A free copy of the news. Free police money which you exchange for free gifts and extra speed, extra power, 
and extraordinary police car performance in your own car. Calling all cars. Attention all cars. San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office. Calling all cars. Cancellation broadcast 95. Regarding escapes from Stockton Jail. These suspects are now in custody. That is all.